my path into WWE was, was kind of crazy. I was a huge fan of Kurt because I watched him when he was making his way. He said, well, you should think about professional wrestling. I was in a bank, the bank got robbed, took a dive down to the ground, split my knee open, and then <laughs> the wrestling career was bam. When WWE came back and said, hey man, are you interested in pro wrestling yeah. again? And I was like, 100%. Unfortunately, like 5% of the people make 95% of the money. And it's Got the same it. thing in professional wrestling. Not everybody can be a star. Either you have the it factor or you don't. And I'm no stranger to hard work. If you come into the wrestling business with the right frame of mind and you put in the work, your probabilities of success are higher now. I trained like an Olympic champion. When I got my raises in WWE, I didn't go to the door. They came to me. There my last raise, Vince brought me in and he said, I'm going to pay you this. And I was just like, my second year, in the business, I broke that seven figure mark. Some people don't do that their entire career. I grew up poor, bro. Yes. You need to go out there and invest your money into assets, not liabilities. And no idea what money was. All I knew was if you get money, you buy things with it. That's all I knew. We all have our dumb purchases. <laughs> I've got multiple dumb purchases too as well, bad decisions. In the world of real estate that I've been doing more and more research, life insurance kept coming up. I want to learn more about it, but I, I just don't understand it so much. That's when, when you came, I was like, okay. Then it was like peeling that cover off where I actually could understand it. With any business, I, I want to see it. Look you in the eyes there, right? <laughs> of course. Explain it to me. Do I need to come off the top ropes? <laughs> yes. So my money's okay, right? <laughs> That's the biggest thing for me as far as um, teaching younger people is to not be a slave to the dollar and then have your money make money for itself then we can essentially start doing what we want to do no we have to do yeah. i get these ones talking Come on, about is it like i don't need anybody else to teach me about insurance i need to learn from you what's crack a everybody money smart guy matt Zapala here he lives here from dallas texas and in the studio today is none other than the almighty bobby lashley here six three two four 60, 70, 80, <laughs> somewhere in there. <laughs> but better than that, great man, entrepreneur, and uh, most recently a client. And I welcome you to the studio. Welcome to the Millionaire Goals podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. I appreciate it, Matt. So it's, uh, it's interesting how we met. We met at the gym. Yes. I think you're doing some tricep extensions. That's yeah, my home away from home. <laughs> and so my trainer goes, hey, Matt, it's Bobby Lashley. I'm like, damn, okay, cool. So I, uh, I looked you up on Instagram real quick and found out that you are also a veteran. Yes. So uh, not only were you a top amateur champion, but you also wrestled for the Army. I did. So, so talk to us about that. Well, I, after I got out of college, I remember, I remember how it happened. I, when I was, I was very successful in college, and, and the last year that I wrestled, I won my third national championship. And when I won my third national championship, I remember jumping on my coach and saying, what next? You know, because you, you put so much into wrestling, but we don't have a professional sport yeah. afterwards. It's, it's wrestling, and you're done. Yeah. So um, at that time, I went and took a regular job. And then a year what, later. What was that regular job? Bobby Lashley had a regular job? I, I, I was a sports coordinator okay. for the city of Wolf Allen. I was, I, was, I was a sports coordinator. So I was, I was doing all the sports from gymnastics to softball to soccer. I was the one coordinating everything. And that's what I wanted to do. Okay. I, mean, I, I had a degree in business management, yeah. uh, recreation administration. So right. that was the line that I wanted to kind of go okay. with. Anything dealing with sports, I was in. So <laughs> how my coach got me into it, Oops. I just did regular work. So I was working there for a whole year, just doing the regular nine to five thing. And, and um, a year after, whole entire year after I graduated, my coach called me up and he said, hey, I have tickets for the US Open. And that was the big national wrestling competition. That was after you make it to um, college and you come out in the, and then you try to make it to the world team and the Olympic team. And, and I was like, all right, all right this is perfect. I'd, I'd love to go to it. I mean, I want to go freestyle. You know, was it Greco yeah, Roman? It was, it was freestyle. freestyle. Okay. So I was like, yeah, I'd love to go to it. And then he goes, all right, well, I got tickets. Just um, get, get your flight. These are the days we're going and everything. And I was like, all right, cool. Boom. It was over. And then um, back to work. And then he calls me back. He was like, you know what? I got, he said, you, sh you should wrestle in it. I was like, are you crazy? I said, man, I haven't even been on the mat for an entire year. When I said, was this it? I was done, you know? I was yeah, yeah. too many years into wrestling. I was like, it was hard to do, but I had to break myself away from it. So wow. I was completely away from it. And then he called me up, he goes, you should wrestle in it. And I was like, coach, there ain't no way I can wrestle. I've been going out partying, I'm a young kid, <laughs> you know, I'm doing all this stuff, I got a new job, whole new life. I said, I can't do it. 
And then he goes, all right, well, if you're scared, I'll talk to you later. And Clicks hangs up, and he was like, oh, you did that. I was like, I'm not scared, so we got in an yeah. argument. Long yeah. story short, I, I said, all right, I'll, I'll wrestle him. So I went okay. to a local high school, and I was, like, training with some high school kids, getting ready for the U.S. Nationals. And um, wrestled there, trained for about two weeks. And then I went to the tournament, and not being in shape, being off the match for an entire year, I had a really good showing. I mean, the only thing that kind of kept me down was the fact that I had no wind. I, had, I wasn't prepared for it, but I went and wrestled some of the top guys. And I remember one of the guys, he was the top guy in the weight class, and I lost like four to two you know, okay. in a close match. Yeah. I just, just didn't have down. the win. Just a takedown away, just right? Just a takedown, yeah. I mean. Um, so after that, um, my coach was like, man, you don't, you, you can't stop now. You have so much love in the thing. <laughs> and I was like, all you right. Got, you got you hooked. <laughs> yeah. So uh, long story short, I started talking with the, with the Army coach. And they have, a, they have a program in the Army called the World Class Athlete Program. And it's a program designed for guys that are soldiers, the opportunity to make the Olympic team if, they have, if they're Olympic caliber. Um, so you have to be caliber of uh, Olympic caliber to even be on the team. So you have to challenge your way into it. But the first thing you have to do is you have to join the service. So I joined the service. Went to boot camp? Went to boot camp. Really? Fort Benning, Georgia. Okay, so as a, as a wrestler, how was boot camp for you? Quick, quick, quick side note. So, I, I, I burned through. I was setting records. I mean, I was, I was in great shape. My two mile, I did my two mile in 10 minutes and 30 seconds. I did 120 push ups in, in two minutes, 120 sit ups. I mean, I was burning yeah, through everything. You're PT freak. You're and PT freak. And, yeah, yeah. and when, I, when I grew up, so my dad was in the Army. 26 years. My sister was in the Army. I have an older sister in the Air Force. So an my whole Marines, too, right? uncles had three uncles. Yeah. All three of them were in the Marines. So my whole lifestyle was military. So I knew all about it. So, you know, when I went into wow. it, I knew how to, I knew how to do drill. I knew, I knew how, um, dress right. I knew, I knew the speed of, of the military and what they expected from me. So coming in there, I was a kid that already graduated college and I'm going into his 11 Bravo. So I said, you're a grunt. I was a grunt. <laughs> so I'm going in there with guys that are fresh out of high school, and I'm 25 years old at this time. You know, I think I was 25, like 24, 25. But you know, I had life experience already. Sure. Graduated college. I could have went in as an officer, but I was just trying to get into this program. So I burned through it. I, I did great. Slam dunk. Slam dunk. So when when you um, you wrestled, and uh, why why didn't you stay in? How come you didn't uh, extend your career further in the in the, in the military? Well, um, I only went in for three years, and I was coming up on my third year, and I, and I went and had knee surgery, and they kind of botched the knee surgery. Um, so it ended my... What, what the, VA, the VA messing up surgeries? What, what's wrong with this? What's wrong with this country? <laughs> the VA is messing, messing shit up. <laughs> <laughs> Military doctors messing things up. I've never heard of that before. It, it, you know, it was a, it was a crazy experience. Um, um, my path into WWE was, was kind of crazy because I was at the Olympic Training Center. That's where my assignment was. From being in WCAT, we were stationed in Fort Carson, which was Colorado Springs. Mm -hmm. So we would have to go to the Olympic Training Center, which was right down the street. We'd do our drill, and then we'd go there, and that's where our practice was. So I was going through it, and then Kurt Angle was in the WWE at the time. Kurt comes down, he sees us, and he was like, man, he said, Bobby, he said, he said man, you got, a, you got a good look. You ever think about doing professional wrestling? Really? He planted that seed in you. Kurt was, I was a huge fan of Kurt because I watched him when he was making his way um, through high school and through college and everything like that. He was a monster, a beast. Yeah. And then he went to WWE, so I kind of followed his career a little bit also through the professional run. And I was like, man, I was like, yeah. And he, he told me, he was like, you know what? There's no professional sport for us. He said, in wrestling, if you did the same thing that you did in wrestling, in football, you would have been in the NFL for sure. Right. I was Lots. a three-time national champion, yeah. four-time All-American. So he yeah. said... You've been a first-round draft pick. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. He, said, yeah. he, said, he said, well, you should think about you know, professional wrestling. And then, and then after we had that conversation, several, a few months later, I was in a bank. The bank got robbed. Took a dive down to the ground. Split my knee open, and then <laughs> I ended the wrestling career was. Gone. Damn. Yeah. Guy came in, kicked the door down, was taking a shot. Holy I dove holy. down to the ground, landed on my knee, ended my it, it like it, it it put me back. And then I went through surgery after wow. surgery, and one surgery got botched, and another surgery. It was just it was a big mess. But then that kind of. Um, I had to start a medical out of the military at that time because of the surgeries and and then the time my time was almost up anyway so we just kind of went through the process and that's when WWE came back and said hey man are you interested in pro wrestling yeah. again and I was like 
One hundred percent. It was like one door closed, <laughs> another door was opening, and I was like, ah, yes. So, um, so uh, let's fast forward. Uh, if if I'm a, if I'm in your situation in 2023, I'm in I'm in college. I'm about to get done, and I want to look at professional wrestling as an option. How does a professional wrestler make money? Um, scratching a lottery ticket. <laughs> that, really? I mean, no. Yeah. I mean, because it's it's with every every sport they always say or any any business. It's like. Unfortunately, like 5% of the people make 95% of the money. And it's the same thing in professional wrestling. Not everybody can be a star. (laughs) Um, Either you have the it factor or you don't. I mean, that is it. But um, you can work. You can put in the work. Um, And I'm no stranger to hard work. If you come into the wrestling business with the right frame of mind and you put in the work, your probabilities of success are higher now. Because the WWE is hiring so many people right now. We have other organizations that are out there and they're paying really well. So if you just come in and you really focus, you really learn, you learn the business, you learn the history of the business, you learn the art of professional wrestling, and you stay in great shape, your probabilities of success are a little bit higher. So for me, when I got in, you know, my whole goal before was to be an Olympic champion. So I trained like an Olympic champion when I was going through my developmental in WWE. You know, I was waking up in the morning, doing my cardio, working out, watching tape. Like I just engulfed myself into just learning everything I can about professional wrestling. And then and then I'm me, so I I'm always the student at any point in my career. Even this year that I'm twenty years into the business, I'm always learning. Mm-hmm. So if you don't have that opportunity or if you don't have that in you to humble yourself in, in, in order to learn and work with people, then you're not going to make it in the business. So that's part of it also. It's just, was, your, was your income like in, in, your w, in your professional wrestling career? Was it like suck and win, suck and win, biting dirt, biting dirt, and bam, it took off in terms of bigger opportunities and bigger paychecks? Is that how it worked for yes. you? Or was it, more, was it more up and down? No, no. <clears throat> I, was, I was very fortunate that when I came in, I didn't think about the money, I thought about the work. So I was always that way, just from a military Great point. background. Yep. I was like, man, the, the hard, I, I love this quote because I use it a lot on my Instagram. The harder I work, the luckier I get. So I'm not thinking about over the – some of these guys go into business, they're right up in the door knocking on Vince's door and saying, hey, I want more money, give me more money. He's like, show me. So when I got my raises in WWE, I didn't go to the door. They came to me. They brought me an office. My go. last raise, Vince brought me in, and he said, I'm going to pay you this. And I was just like – and he was like, say something. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but it was like that because when I first got in, in the development, I was just getting paid, get by money. Yeah. Completely understand. All I needed was the opportunity. Sure. That's all I need for anything. I don't care what it is. Just give me the opportunity. I'll make my money afterwards. So I just started busting my butt. And then when I went on TV, I went from making little money. Uh, I think my second year in the business, I broke that seven-figure mark. Wow. Okay. Most, some people don't do that their entire career. But um, I was fortunate enough to be in some good angles. Yep. And I just worked my ass off. And I had something that the crowd liked. And I had something that the management liked. So I was just kind of making my way. I wasn't, I'm not the person to kiss ass. I'm not the person to schmooze. I'm, I'm, I'm me. I'm me to the waiter. I'm me to the CEO. I'm the same person. And I think that's something that the crowd, you can't fake that. You know, if you watch our business, you watch professional wrestling, you say, he's playing a character. He's trying to be something. He's this. He's a politician. That guy's real. It's just me. And I think the crowd understands that. And I think that's why people get behind me. You often bring up uh, the name Gerald Briscoe. In your conversation with me, yeah, uh, talk to us about uh, when you started making money, and he asked you what you were doing with your money. What was, what was that conversation? I, lo- I love this story. <laughs> well, so when you talk to me about when I when I started making money, I said I used to always do this when I got my checks. This is back in the days before direct deposit. We get the checks sent, and Tuesday checks were in the mail, so I would go and get that check. And before, you know, it was good money. I was making like five or six thousand dollars a month or whatever or a week, and I would like peel it open. I was like. <laughs> you know, and they was like, oh, 707, yes, boom. And every week it was like, I, I would always peel it from the back. So I'd look at cents, cents, dollars, and then seven, seven, nine, yes. And I remember the the first time when, when, a, when a good check came in, I did the same thing. It's like, peeled it back, three, four, seven, eight, eight thousand, yes, boom. And I 
drive to the bank and I go to fill out the deposit. And that's when I had to rip over the rest. And he was like, there was another eight. I was like, 80,000. I was like, oh, man, that was the first time I really had like a big check. Because you stopped this on the first one week. Yeah, because I always stopped right there at the at the thousand mark. So I didn't know that there was more after that. And then at that point, there was another eight. And I was like, <gasps> come on, baby. I've never seen this kind of money. I grew up poor, bro. I mean, it was, um, I, you know, everybody has that story. But, you know, my... My parents split up. My, my family's from Panama, so mm -hmm. um, English was my mom's second language. So it was four of us in a little shack in Kansas, and we, we just made it. Um, but I used to always just work hard. And um, when I saw that, I was like, 88000 I was like, boom, I put it in the bank, and I had to, like, check my account. I was like, I really it's in there. It's really in there. money in there. I was like, what do I do with this? So, of course, the money started rolling in. Once you start breaking those different barriers, I guess yeah. you would say. Then yeah. you in business, we call those. that no matter what. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then and then and then and then I eventually had that other number come through. So now I'm in come this, on, baby. Yeah, so now I'm rolling. And um, I remember I was sitting next to Gerald Briscoe before one of the shows, and, and he was the one that originally talked to me about getting me in into WWE. And because he had a wrestling amateur wrestling background, so he looked for amateur wrestlers that can go in. That's how he found me. And he comes through, and he was like, um, he was like, so Bobby, what are you doing with your money? And I just bought this brand new Escalade. Es Escalade? <laughs> Escalade. Okay, okay. I bought an Escalade. Right. Right. I put TVs in every headrest. <laughs> I had a TV in the front where I could bypass it, where I could actually watch TV while I drive, which is completely illegal. Um, oh, in, in the dash. In the dash. Oh, oh, yeah, in the dash. Yeah. And then there was like a little trip, so if, if the cops came, I could flip the switch and it would go back to the regular screen, but I had everything. I wanted everything. I had new rims on it, everything. And I was like, yeah, I got this new truck. And and he was like, no, no, no. He goes, real estate. He said, he said, I've been doing real estate, so I'm going to tell you about real estate. He said, you need to go out there and invest your money into assets, not liabilities. And that's when he started kind of explaining that to me. Wow. And it goes back to that rich dad, poor dad. Like, yeah. I did not get those kind of lessons growing up. Sure. I had no idea what money was. All I knew was if you get money, you buy things with it. That's all I knew. So, um. When he told me that, I was just like, well, how do I do it? And he kind of gave me a little bit of his portfolio. He was like, I just sold one of my houses for, like, I bought it for 200 I rented it out. I sold it for $2 million because it's, yeah. I was like, whoa. So now he's telling me about this. He was like, just buy assets, buy real estate, and, and rent them out and kind of build a portfolio for yourself. Still didn't know completely because we were just in a conversation right here where he couldn't break it all down to mm -hmm. me. And he told me, you know, and I love this quote, it was like, sometimes you just got to jump and then find your way as you go down or as you go up. Um, so he said, just buy something. So I was like, okay, if I'm gonna buy something, I found an agent and I, every agent that I talked to, I said, do you deal with investment properties? And I found one guy that did, sat down with him and he started like educating me more. I yeah. love getting education, but still, I just wanted to buy something. So I bought it and I told you, I, I bought a place 42,000, put 4,000 into it and I rented it out. And I was fortunate enough to I rented that thing out for $1,200 a month. Twelve fifty a month for two years, and I was like, "This is great! Like I'm making yeah. my money back." And, and but I still didn't know the entire business. And then, um, and then after two years, I ended up selling it, and I sold it for ninety eight thousand. So the whole transaction was fantastic. And from there, so cash flow from it and it doubled. Yeah, yeah. And then from there, I just started buying more and buying more. And then, you know, I wasn't making a tremendous amount of money because I still had bills and everything that was taken care of. So I was buying like one or two houses a year. So I was doing that for a while, so I was kind of building up a portfolio. And then um, as I started fighting and doing other things, then I started doing more. So I was doing yeah. flips, rentals, and then, and then of course, um, when you're making money and money are coming in, you have all kinds of other people telling you about different kind of investments. So I made some investments where I lost some money on some, on some just, oh, here goes another something. And I was like, oh, really? Here? Let me write a check over here. So I, I, I kind of ran away from what I was making money in because I was getting all these carrots dangled all over the place that didn't, didn't make any sense. But right. then I went back to real estate and then real estate just been something that I've done. Independable. Forever. Yeah. So it's interesting how everybody for most part has this journey. You got that journey of, all right, I can do something big with my life. I got to make a big decision. I may not know what the end result might be, but I know I have faith that it's going to go in the right direction. And the portion too is, uh, um, you took a leap of faith. You bet on you bet on yourself. Of course. And the other part of it is we all have our dumb purchases. <laughs> I've got multiple dumb purchases too as well. Bad decisions. So get, get out the way, right? You learn you learn from that, and then you learn 
how to stay focused on keeping the main thing the main thing. So when I met you in the gym, and then uh, you and I had dialogue, we had lunch, you know, I think the following week, whatever, and because you're, you're, you're new to Frisco. By the way, what brings you to Frisco? Uh, I wanted to come to Frisco a long time ago, but um, I never had the opportunity to because my ex got married and they were stuck there. And she's like, I'm not leaving and I'm not leaving my kids. And then they had, they got a divorce and unfortunately, but she wanted to get out of there and she was like, let's go. And I'd looked at Frisco years back where if I would have came here earlier, I would have <laughs> tripled my money, but. <laughs> I think, but I think we still have that opportunity, oh, man. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But I, I always love the area. I love yeah. everything about it. I love the fact that it's great for kids, but also there's a lot to do for adults. And it's not that thing where we got to go to a bar club and yeah. there's, there's things that you yeah. can go do outside yeah. of everything else. So I love just the atmosphere. I love the energy of the of the people. Everybody there has kind of business minded and sure. moving in a, in a positive direction. So I was like, this is a place I need to be. Yeah. And of course my son plays football, so Texas football. Of course. <laughs> and then my my dad lives down here, my sister lives down here. So I was like Thank And you. my job, we're independent contractors, so the state taxes, the lack of state love taxes it. down there is there's just plus 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 plus. So I was like, let's go. Plus I also Coming from Chicago myself, I noticed that it's easier to fly in and out of DFW or Dallas Love because you're kind of like right in the middle of everything. Yeah. So when we met in the gym and then we had a follow-up conversation and then uh, we, we struck a conversation about, uh, about life insurance. Yes. Uh, uh, what, what started uh, piquing your attention to, to life insurance and the way we funded it for you, creating you know, infinite banking strategies and, and max funding it? What was, what was uh, what piqued your attention to that regard? Because I, I kept hearing about it, and and I, I got I got with a really good bookkeeper, and she was like, "Do you have life insurance?" And I was like, and then and then um, unfortunately, in, in, one, in my business, you know, there were several guys that had passed away, and I know that Vince was upset with one of the guys because he just really didn't have anything for his kids. He was mm. just like everyone else, you know, that didn't come from money, didn't know anything about money. The money was just there, and then when he passed away, you know, nothing was left for his kids. Mm. And um, we never wanted to think about that, but I said that's one reason to do it. But then in the world of real estate that I've been doing more and more research, life insurance kept coming up, kept coming up, kept coming up. And I was like, man, who do I can, I, I, I want to learn more about it, but I, I just don't understand it so much. That's when you came, I was like, okay. And then when, when we connected, I, I looked you up and I was like, oh. All right. So then when we <laughs> sat down, then it was like peeling that cover off where I actually could understand it. And then after speaking with your wife, it was like wide open. Then yeah. I was like, oh, this now this makes sense. Yep. And it's like, I felt like the, even even the people that were trying to explain it on Instagram, they're, they're throwing a whole bunch of numbers in. Okay, you do yeah. this and do this and do this and do this. And I'm like, ah, I, I don't get it. Sure. So when I, spoke, when I sat down with you and we started talking about it, and then I, I really started like putting actual knowledge behind some of the things that I heard, and I was like, oh, okay, this is this is definitely something that I need to do just for the death benefits of, of my kids and being able to take care of my kids. God forbid anything yeah. happened to me, but then um, then working it into my business, it made sense. And I'm still learning now, so I'm still sure. trying to maximize um, my policies and do the best that I can. Or and still figure it out, but up to this point, I, I understand where I'm at. Was it helpful for you when we got your policy issued and delivered that you were able to visit the insurance company and talk to the chief financial officer of the company and the, and the, the, the real estate department of the, uh, the insurance company? Did, was that helpful for you? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. Because of course, with any business, I, I wanna see, I, wanna, I, like to, I like to sit down with people. I yeah. like to I like yeah. look you in the eyes. All right, what are we <laughs> of course, <laughs> explain it to me. Do I need to come off the top ropes? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so my money's okay, right? <laughs> <laughs> Intimidating client, man. <laughs> you sure? Yeah, I, I, I uh, appreciate this photo. If we can go to the VMix, uh, Jordan, I appreciate this photo because uh, I ran into you because a good friend of mine is Steve Weatherford, and um, he uh, he's a Super Bowl champ. Won a couple, uh, won a Super Bowl with uh, new, um, the Giants, and then and then I bump in here. You're like, "What's up? You can't call nobody." <laughs> yeah. like, Bobby, I know you're in town, bro. And so for me, being a kid, you know, for some of you guys out there, like you aspire one of these days to be an athlete or something. Where a tall, skinny kid like me, no chance, man, no chance. I didn't have the DNA. I didn't have the what do you call it? The the genetics for it. But to be able to be in business to, to surround myself with the likes of you, the likes of Steve Weatherford. You know, that's where entrepreneurship has brought me to a level of association that maybe in my physical 
area of my life I would never be able to compete with. So you like helping people. You like entrepreneurship. What is entrepreneurship and the right form of capitalism? Of course, we have a crony capitalism, you know, people down talking crony capitalism. But how has entrepreneurship and capitalism helped you free enterprise, help a guy like what excites you about those those areas? Um, the education part for me is <clears throat> just like that guy told me, he was like, you know, you, you need to start doing this. And I think I think the biggest thing with me is I think people uh, a stress is a huge deal, especially mm -hmm. for men, across the board. Sure. To be a family to take care of, for, for me, anyone else, because you always think about what you can do for your family. And when you have to go to a job and have that level of stress that you deal with every single day, it makes it difficult. And people don't get to live the best life that they can because they're always kind of like pressing themselves down and humbling themselves or doing something because, like, man, I, I don't want to rock the boat. Okay. So I always tell people, you know, if you have financial freedom, if you have your money making money for itself and you're not going to a job because you have to work to make money, there's a level of stress relief with that. So even with the people that I work with, some of these guys are making big money. But say you're making a million dollars this year and you're, and, and okay, I want to buy a chain, I want to buy this, I want to buy that, but it's okay because I have all this money. And then they go, boom, you're fired. And then you're like, boom, that money dries up quick. And most athletes don't have an opportunity to make that kind of money anywhere else. So I say, before you start making those big decisions on spending all this money, let's start finding some kind of way to be financially set, yeah. financially free. And there's a few different businesses that you can do that. Of course, for me, it's been real estate, but how do you kind of fix the whole yeah. spectrum? How do you put it all together? Um, and in life insurance, I think that just works hand in hand. And almost like I told you before, when I came over here, I was like, man, these are the same businesses, you know, so they can kind of complement each other. So I, I think that that's the biggest thing for me as far as um, teaching younger people is to not be a slave to the dollar. And, and I think if you start doing right with the money, I don't care how much money you make. You can make $1,000 a month. You can make $200,000 a month. If you put that money in the right place for the for, for a set amount of time, you can find a little bit of financial freedom for yourself that you won't be a slave to the job where you have a boss that's telling you what to do when you have, um, you know, your, like we talked about today, oh, hey, today's t Taco Tuesdays, oh, we're on Hump Wednesday, and then we're like, ah, what are you talking about? Friday. <laughs> no, I'm not about it. And then the weekend you get smashed so you can erase everything that you did that week and then start back over and you, your battery is just running down. Yeah. So I'm like, man, if you can find a way to be able to leverage things, yeah. And then, and then, and then have your money make money for itself. Then we can essentially start doing what we want to do, yeah. not what we have to do. Yeah. And then, without that stress. So for me, you know, I enjoy professional wrestling. If I don't enjoy professional wrestling, it gets to the point where it seems like a job. Then I'm, I'm gonna shake hands with my bosses and I'm gonna step away. But right now, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm a kid in a candy store. I'm going out there having fun. And yeah, I make good money. But <clears throat> if it gets to the point where we start dealing with money. I know my value, mm -hmm. and if, if we can't be where my value is, then we, we can shake hands and, and, and we, can, we can do what we need to do. Yep. But um, at this point, I'm making money. My money's making money for itself, mm -hmm. and I just want to be able to teach other people how to do it. And I think that there's a very simple, simple um, path. I always say that it's like a, uh, like a treasure chest, a treasure map. Um, I was talking to some kids in a, in a school. I love talking to kids in school. And, and they were like, well, how do you get to a certain point? And I was like, it's like, all right, um, we have any athletes in here? There's a few people raising their hand. There's one kid sitting in the middle, tall kid. It's like he's sitting there, his legs are up like this. He's probably like 6'10". <laughs> Big old man child. Big, yeah. And he's like, <laughs> like that. And he's being uh -huh. cool. And everybody's like pointing at him. I said, I said, you obviously play basketball, right? He, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I was like, okay. I said, um, do you have any idols? And he was like, well, you know. See, Michael Jordan? Yeah, I like Michael Jordan. Jordan's awesome. He's cool. I was like, you know in his book where he wrote, you know, he went and did 500 free throws a day. He's like, yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. I said, yeah. I said, did you shoot 500 free throws today? And everybody just went quiet. And I was like, that's that's the entrepreneurship that I'm trying to teach people. I get goosebumps talking Come on, about it. Is it. Because it's, it's, it's a map. Anything that you want to do to become successful it's, it's hidden in this book called a map or whatever you want to call it, but that's how it is. Yeah. So I always tell people and, and, and people that are trying to be here, like, 
the things, the times that I've accomplished in most of my career is when I knuckled down and I said, okay, I, I came back to WWE when I was 40 years old, came back to it after, after fighting for 10 years. And before that, I was like, I, was like, I want to get back to WWE. So I set my alarm. I said, I'm going to be getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Damn. I'm going to go do my 40 cardio. 40 years old? Yeah, well, it was like 38 at this time, or yeah. 38, 39. It was around this time. I'm getting up at 4 a.m. I'm going to go do my cardio. Coming back, I have my food. I'm going to take a little nap. I'm going to take my kids to school. Get them. Like, I was so on point with everything. I made my bed in the morning. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you know, and, and I'm doing every single thing that I know that we need to do. Like everybody knows that you can you don't need like it's it's everywhere. So I'm doing all these things and, and the harder I work, the luckier I got. And then I was like, Oh, I got a call. Oh, this happened. Because I was doing I was going to sleep at night a little bit early. I was I, I was I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to do. If I was if I was going to play basketball, I'd be shooting 500 free throws a day. Yeah. I would take the time to just shoot the 500 free throws a day. Sure. There's no there's no secret to success. The secret to success is out there, so it's not a secret. Just do what you should do, and and you will get there. But I think a lot of times people need the coaching in order to say, all right, did you read your 10 minutes today, or did you do 30 minutes of reading today? Yeah. Did you do your cardio today? Did you go work out today? Are you eating right? Are you limiting your sugar? Have you drank your water? Like people need reminding of all these things because people are like, uh, at the end of the day, you know, did you did you get a gallon of water? And you're trying to be a professional wrestler. Did you did you get a good workout? In? Did you stretch? Did you did you do this? Did you do that? And they're like, well, well, didn't I can't I can't get you there. Yeah, I right. can't get you to the finish line. That's the part line. you got to do. Yeah, yeah, you got to do it, but sometimes you need coaching, and sometimes people just need somebody to say, "Hey, let's do these things." Hold you yeah. accountable. Sure. So I think coaching is almost um, somebody that's going to hold you accountable, and somebody that can show you that when you do these things, you will be successful. That's why I like being around successful people. That's when we first had the first conversation. I said, "I can feel it. I can feel the energy. <laughs> you, you, you have proven success in this field." So I was like, "I don't need anybody else to teach me about um, insurance. I need to learn from you." And then when I learned from you and I learned from your wife, when you guys put that down, I was like, I'm in. 100%. Makes up. sense. Yeah. How, how, and the exciting part of it is seeing our guys react to you when we came visit the office. You know, I mean, the, our, our, our evening was kind of winding down for that night, so a lot of people had already left. But I just had some choice, people just to stay behind. You know, how was it like for you to come into our environment and maybe even uh, on a very, very, very small scale, it's still being like you entering the ring because, you know, like, oh, man, Bobby Lashley's here, you know. And, uh, what was it like for you to be around our guys that are new in entrepreneurship, that are new learning the life insurance game? How was it like for you to be around them? You know what? I actually put myself in there as a student, not, not as a teacher. I wasn't, wow. I, and I'm and I'm I'm completely okay with doing that. And I've done that in so many different areas. Like I will humble myself completely yeah. when I walked in there. I'm what, not a telling, what an attractive quality! I'm not telling yeah. you how to do anything. Yeah. When I started fighting, I wasn't coming in there saying, "Hey, I know what to do." I said, "Hey, listen, I'm 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 all ears." So and that's what I did when I came in. I was like, "Teach me." So I put myself in there. So when people came up to me, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm Bobby Lash. Right. <laughs> yeah, like but um, I wanted people to know that that's what you have to do. You have to just kind of humble yourself yeah. in those situations and keep your ears open and just learn. Yeah. By the way, before we even did this, before we had our own planning session here, before we did the podcast, a bunch of veterans got tipped off that you were here, and we, I was a veteran too as well. What was it like for you just to be around other veterans here at the studio? They found that you're a veteran, and the whole veteran community got together. We didn't care about white, black, brown, none of that stuff, right? Uh, yeah. What was it like for you to be around other veterans? It's 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 that same vibe. It's yeah. that same vibe. Everybody's successful, and yeah. I, and I love seeing that. I love seeing. I love being around people like that. Um, just with those guys, I could just see the one guy was from. Um, Cowboy, Cowboy Chicken. Kitchen, uh, Cowboy, Cowboy Chicken. Chicken, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, man, I've been going there. It's right down the street from my house. And he's like, yeah. So he's like yeah. one of the owners. I was like, of course, that makes sense to me. Yeah. That makes sense to me because when you come from the service, you learn that that level of success. You get soldierized in the morning. You know, you get soldierized going through basic. Yeah. And, and you learn those those the way of success. So I love it seeing um, veterans come out and become successful in other areas. Because, you know, they, they tell us when we're in, it's like, stay in because this is your security blanket. Yeah. But sometimes people venture out and, and do some other things. Yeah. But they keep that same philosophy that they, the discipline, the hard work and everything like that. They put into different businesses and they become successful. That's why I love being around those guys. I know your son's a badass right now, but uh, if he says, hey, daddy, I want to follow in daddy's footsteps. Uh, he's, he's a stud athlete right now. You got him in some of the best uh, training and programs. But he says, dad, I want to serve our country. Dad, I want to be a wrestler. What, what's your... What's your conversation with him about that? I would say, why? 
And I would say why, because I, I want you to, like, I'm not going to, I'm not, for me with my kids, I don't force them into anything. I say, I will support you in anything that you do. You just tell me what you want to do. I can tell you what I have expertise in and what I can, what I can give you advice in. But at the end of the day, in order for you to be successful, it has to be something that your heart and your, and your passion is, is, is put you towards. So if it's, if it's in the military, you know, we can discuss how we want to do it, what direction we want to go. If it's in professional wrestling, I can, I can walk you right through it. But that goes back to my coaching. Um, I, I've yeah. been in so many different areas and I've, and I've, and I've talked to the top of the top and, and, and I have connections with all those people. So my coaching, what I want to be able to do is like coach people in that, in that level too. And for my son, my son ultimately is like, whatever you're doing, it's hard work. So <laughs> I push hard work at him. Whatever you're going to do, I'm going to give you all the resources, but you're going to work hard. You do your part, I'll do mine. Do you find it, because um, you've been in, in individual sport for a minute, uh, you know, wrestling and, and, and whatnot, it, it, how does that parlay into you actually building a team, teamwork, building, building the Bobby Lashley organization, building your, your, your next moves, you know, uh, going forward? How does that, being an individual sport, you know, having the spotlight on you? Because I know you're a guy that's about the people. Of course. So, so how do you think that transition can be like for you? Oh, well, I'm going to brag on myself a little bit. You go for it. <laughs> <laughs> for no, sure. when I when I went to college, my my team that I went to college with, um, they were took 20th in the nation. Wow. When I got there, my first year I took fourth. My second year I won nationals. My team won nationals. My second year, my hey. second year, my third year, my team I won nationals. My team won nationals, and because you know I was the team leader those years, my my. Sophomore, junior, senior year, I was, and our team was successful, and those same guys are successful now. So I'm, I'm a type of leader that leads by example. Like I'm oh, gonna show you the way. Yes. I'm gonna show you the hard way. Just come with me, and that's why I want to go and build a team. Is because I think that I can show a team how to be successful because of the success that I've had in a bunch of different areas. Yep. And I lead by example. Gotcha. I love it. Well, if you're looking for a leader that wants to lead by example, make sure you follow Bobby Lashley. Easily, you can find him on Instagram at Bobby, at Bobby Lashley. Um, any parting words here before, we, before we, we let you go, Bobby? I appreciate you being generous with your time. I'm looking forward to being by your side in your next moves, whatever chapters you want to write. <laughs> you, got, you got a battle buddy, man. So uh, anything you want uh, anybody, everybody to know? No, that's awesome. I think that it's, um, it's, it's a privilege for me to be able to come and work with you. Like I told you before, I, I looked you up, and then I, and I've seen how – and I've followed your Instagram for a while now. I'm like, all right, all right. I love everything that you post. So, um, like, again, I'm a student right now, and, and I want to learn from you as much as I can about this insurance um, business. And I'm already in. I've already did my policy. I'm probably going to mm -hmm. buy more policies. And, and, I, and I think that's the next step in my career is to start doing some business there and kind of parlaying that with my real estate. So, I mean, um, I'd love to be able to build a team and do something working forward. So, uh, Let's I do need it. some help. If, you like, if you're watching this and you like what you're hearing and you're insightful in terms of what Bobby's talking about, send us a DM. Would you like to attend our next event? Please put it in the comment section below or hit the link in the description area of this video if you find it here on YouTube. So that being said, uh, if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel here at Seven Figure Squad's Millionaire Goals Podcast and drop your comments below. You agree with us? You don't agree with us? We want to hear from you too as well. So that being said, on behalf of Bobby Lashley here from Dallas, Texas, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Bye-bye.